Hey, good morning. Welcome. We are in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Today, just one verse, verse 22. And Jesus has come into the synagogue. He's read the scriptures, and he suddenly stopped where they didn't expect him to stop. And he said, hey, this is all being fulfilled right now. And now they're going to lose their mind. Here's what verse 22 says. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. But it doesn't end there. And they said, is not this not Joseph's son? See, somebody raises up a question there. They hear what he says. It's pretty amazing. I can't believe I heard this today. We've never heard this in the synagogue ever. Nothing like this ever in the synagogue today. And they're quite amazed. They're thinking about it. This is uh, pretty big news to hear, you know, to this day scripture, this scripture is fulfilled in our hearing. How could that be? You know. But then somebody, somebody there begins to say, and they begin to talk to each other. Hey, isn't, isn't, isn't this Joseph's son? Because there were some questions years ago, you know, about, about Joseph's son. But this is, this is the trend. This is what's happening. And what's going on, obviously, of course, the devils are putting it into people's mind to, uh, to dispute this gracious words coming from the mouth of Jesus, that to this day the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Satan doesn't want them to think about that. Uh, he puts it in their mind. Isn't uh, this that uh, Joseph, isn't this that guy, you know, that, that was kind of weird when he was a kid? Isn't that who we're talking about here? You know, there's some questions about, you know, how things were there at the beginning, you know. So that's the way it begins. And it starts with a subtle insinuation. You know, we're not sure who this is. So as soon as the messenger says something that's kind of intense and kind of giant, as soon as that happens, the devils all pile on and, you know, hey, we're going to start asking some questions here, some really big questions. In fact, this is going to be an attack and onward. We'll, we'll, save, we'll save it for tomorrow. Oh, we're going to spare you this morning. But... They are going to not be ready to hear. You know, the problem here isn't what Jesus said. The problem is that a lot of people aren't willing, they're not ready to hear what Jesus says. So when Jesus says something kind of big and unexpected and like uh, momentous, it's like, uh, well, did we hear that right? You know, it must have wax in my ears. Like, he couldn't have said that. So God actually intervenes in his world. He's a good God. And he is going to be intervening again. Uh, he's, he's intervening even now. Friend, may we be on his team. May we be on his side. May we be ready to trust Jesus at all of his interventions, even the ones that are unexpected, not anticipated, and even things that sort of mess up our schedule. Oh, Lord, mess up our schedule completely. But come and intervene. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that you care enough about us to come down here and, and, and disrupt us. Please, Lord, disrupt us some more. Give us ears to hear. Give us a heart to respond to you. Help us, Lord, when the devils instantly suggest that, uh, that we got to discredit this thing we've heard. It's not, it's not from above. Help us, Lord. Of course, we need to test it by your word, but help us to be open to receive the gifts you have for us. Now, Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for a Lord like Jesus. Now, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the blessings of this Jesus be upon you today.